Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Welcome, everyone. This is Steve Meisinger, your host for today's ISC webinar. I'm pleased that we have Tony Hansen with us, and Tony will be talking about successful market timing for FX options. She's the president and CEO of trading from Main Street, www, the web address which is www.tonyhanson.com. So please go and check out uh, either Trading for Main Street or Tony Hanson, www.tonyhanson.com. She, of course, has spent many years uh, in learning technical analysis. She trades on a daily basis. Um, she's been with us at the IC many times. She brings some tremendous insight regarding all the markets. So without further ado, I, I want to introduce Tony, Tony Hanson. Tony, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here again. So like Steve mentioned, I'm going to be talking about uh, successful market timing for FX options. Um, I know some of you guys are uh, new to trading Forex options or kind of just starting to get your feet wet in it. Um, so Steve will stick around here for a couple minutes afterwards and answer any questions that you might have regarding them. Um, Obviously, uh, fxoptions.com is associated with uh, the International Securities Exchange, which is the largest op options exchange. And what I want to share today is that um, basically focusing on market timing. And for those of you that are not familiar with the, the concept of market timing, I know most of you have like a little bit of an introduction into it at least. What it is is basically using a style of market analysis for timing your entries, your targets, exits, and stop levels in different securities. So we're looking at um, basically focusing on the technical analysis side of market timing, where we are actually using charts for timing each of the actions that we are taking in individual securities, whether you're trading options, you're trading the spot market, futures market, Forex, it doesn't matter. You're all going to be focusing on um, using these charts for timing these entries and exits. And specifically today, we're going to focus on using the FX options. Now, they're always adding, it seems, more, more uh, options here. Uh, and up until recently, they had all been dollar-based, and so you'd see the dollar-Australian dollar pair, and basically your U.S. dollar was always going to be your base currency. But now they've started adding um, additional options as well, so you're seeing them more in line with the, what you would think of as the traditional active spot market. And here's a list of the ones that they have currently available. And again, I think every presentation I give, they have added more to this. So it's a good idea to check out uh, the website, fxoptions.com, for the latest data. And they'll show you all of um, the recent quotes. And there's a whole slew of information available there, including a lot of archived classes as well. So it's definitely worth checking out to learn more. Now, when we're looking at trading options, one of the most important things to understand are price and time objectives. So we're not just looking at you know, what the overall direction of an underlying security is going to be, but also approximately how long it's going to take for prices to hit those objectives. And when we're talking about market timing, there's a number of different strategies and techniques that you can use to really improve your timing, not just for getting into the positions, but also for you know, where to place your stop levels, how quickly to move those stop levels, what target objectives to set when you need to change those target objectives as um, as actions or you know, as the uh, actual security begins to unravel over time. And so we're going to look at a number of those ways that I will look at them. And 
I have a, I come from a system of market analysis where I'm pretty much self-taught because when I started coming into the world of online trading, there were a, a couple of core books written about technical analysis, but they were, for the most part, very simplistic and trying to actually apply them to the markets was really, really difficult in order to get consistent results. So I kind of stepped back and just started from a very basic background of where I, I tried to guess basically the next day, you know, where a list of core securities was going to go. And what I discovered over time was that there were key underlying factors in the price or volume activity in any security that basically depending on how those underlying factors formed or developed, they influenced the price action that followed in that security. And I came to basically think of these as the building blocks of price development. And these are the key things that are going to help you in all types of strategy development. And basically, they're the core components or core components of market timing, the core building blocks of market timing. Now, there's three that I really want to focus on in today's class. You know, in previous classes, I've gone into uh, additional ones, but I really want to go into these three building blocks more in depth in this se in this session because when I'm looking through my winning and losing positions and I'm looking for, you know, what components do they have that are similar versus you know, where are their differences, these three building blocks tend to have the biggest impact on the success or failure of my trade, not just the price, you know, movement that I will get out of it, but also you know, the amount of times a particular strategy will stop out. You know, there's two ways to measure success in a trade. There's success compared to what your stop level is. Say you're risking $100, you know. Um, how much do you make on average compared to that $100 risk? But there's also success based upon how often you actually take a stop. For instance, is a strategy 80% successful? And if it's 80% successful, for how much is it 80% successful? Is it 2 to 1, 1 to 1, 3 to 1, 0.5 to 1? And looking at these building blocks, you can manipulate them and treat them as basically pros and cons in a strategy, uh, in price action. And the more pros you have lined up, the higher the probability patterns you can form, can form, but also you can also get the uh, larger reward per risk strategies. And the one thing that is really, really good with this type of market analysis is that every trader is a little bit different. We all have different levels that we're willing to take for risk. Um, you know, for me, I really do not like being wrong more than about 20 to 25 percent of the time. If I take a series of stops, it starts to affect my ability to actually follow through according to my plan. And it takes me a little bit longer to get back on track. So I have to build back up again. Whereas a lot of traders, they might be willing to be perfectly okay with having about 50% of their setup stop out, as long as their winners are substantially larger than their losers. And looking at the pros and cons on prices um, as strategies develop is going to help you adjust and see, you know, what is your comfort level. So the three that we're going to focus on are support and resistance levels, pace, um, which can also be called momentum, and trend development or trend placement. And these are all very simplistic titles, but when you get into them and looking at the details of them, they can actually become quite complex. And we're not just looking at one of these each and each by itself. We're looking at how they relate to one another. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.